everybody. Welcome back to the High on God podcast. I'm Zach Pratt, and this is Matt Spinks. What up? We go through topics related to Jesus Christ and heaven on earth as experienced through humanity, wrapped up in him by his spirit. Come on, come on. Enjoyment of the Father. Yeah, welcome back, guys. We are excited. This is episode 12, I believe. And uh, we're going to be talking about heaven on earth realities today. So um, we've had some good conversation going on already, and uh, we're going to dive into that. But um, first of all, we always start with a book recommendation and some music recommendations. And so Zach has a book he'd like to share with you this week. Yeah, absolutely. I've been getting into Alexandra Radcliffe's uh, doctoral dissertation turned theology book for the Come on. the person um, the 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 vocabulary might be a little dense but I enjoy that um, a lot of words to look up and learn um, but it's presented in this in this great two part fashion the first part talking about a trinitarian basis for experiencing God and the second part being all about sanctification that's or awesome. the outer working of salvation as experienced by us. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's really good, really juicy. She builds up a, a great uh, narrative, especially on the second part about sanctification. I'm, I'm really enjoying it, enjoying leafing through it, jumping back and forth. Um, definitely check it out if you want to um, hear a lot of historical context for experiencing a, a blissful, holy life. Um, as purchased and won completely and totally by Jesus Christ yes. um, and uh, see what people have said about that over the years, particularly the Torrances. Uh, the book is mainly about a breakdown of the Torrances' uh, perspective on those things and she comes up with her own really juicy conclusions. So um, That's awesome, man. Yeah, thanks for that book, Alexandra, if you watch this. So, yeah. Yeah, and I, I've noticed a bunch of our glory friends in different places starting to read that book, and I haven't picked it up myself, <laughs> but uh, it's worth diving deeper into the revelation of the Torrance brothers. Um, I wanted to recommend some music to you, which is uh, something that's been around for a while, um, but uh, if, if you look at, uh, up the Rivera's uh, Alberto and Kimberly Rivera, they have soaking music. Um, and they're really kind of some of the, you know, the, the godfather, godmother of soaking. Yeah. And, uh, I know some people say that, uh, nobody soaks anymore, but, uh, <laughs> I, it's, it's funny. I, I've just, you know, found a, ref, a real refreshing recently and just getting back into some just soaking with like, you know, long periods of just keyboards, just kind of rolling keyboard pads. And you're just like, you know, enjoying like meditation or just sitting there with, Abba, Jesus, and Holy Spirit. And so if you haven't uh, got a hold of some of Alberto and Kimberly Rivera's stuff, it's super good. Um, I think they started in the early 90s, you know, so they have tons of albums out there. And, you know, some of the stuff isn't like totally finished work, but for the most part, I just like the fact that they have just long periods, uh, you know, of just, uh, it's just music you can trance out to. And uh, and so, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's just so good. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> so today we we're excited to kind of converse around really the gospel, um, the reality <laughs> of what Jesus shared when he said the kingdom of heaven is at hand and uh, which is the source of our bliss, which is why we're high. It's, you know, how you stay yeah. whacked is that, you know, the gospel, um, which I often share, you know, almost everywhere I go because Jesus shared it everywhere he went. Uh, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Um, you know, if you ask a hundred different Christians, a lot of times, what is the gospel? You often get a hundred different answers. Right. Right. Uh, because even, you know, even in the church, it's just, it's so wild that, uh, you know, we just, sometimes we just lost sight of the main thing. You know, I grew up in the church and I never heard anyone share with me that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. <laughs> I think I remember hearing the kingdom is here, but not yet sometimes, but it's funny. Like, um, well, first of all, that phrase is never in the Bible. And when um, when Jesus shared, you know, Matthew four seventeen, Mark one fifteen, he said the kingdom of heaven is here, not here and also not here, you know. And so, but I think um, 
because we haven't experienced so many things, uh, there's been uh, some common theologies that grow up that say, well, the kingdom of heaven, I mean, obviously Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is here, but since we're not experiencing it, let's add that into our theology and end up changing the scriptures, you know, tw twisting scriptures, not on purpose, um, but, uh, you know, to try to line up with our experience. And so I think that happens so many different places um, where we don't understand the scripture we're more familiar with our experiences and we end up basing our theology on just you know man's best ideas and stuff rather than you know the the divine revelation that was given to us by God you know in the person of Jesus so anyway there is so much to unpack in this man um, <laughs> I've been sharing on it for years since I first heard the message uh, in 2008 <clears throat> through a series of just encounters where, um, you know, I, I just always had this concept that God was, you know, probably in the sky. Maybe I knew he was kind of in me, but I always thought there were blockages, that there were tons of blockages and that we were kind of, you know, trying to do our best on earth to transform the earth and, right. and all this stuff. And yeah. those are good <clears throat> ideas, um, but ultimately... Uh, man, it just left me feeling like I think so many people feel that, you know, their their spiritual experience is a roller coaster at best, or oftentimes they just feel like I don't hear God. They feel like I, I don't feel God. Where is God close to me? I'm not even sure. And the revelation of the gospel comes and and man, it, for me, it just transformed everything, dude. And this is what I go over in the High on God book, like you know, in the first chapter or whatever, like. My life was jacked up, dude. Like all the stuff I thought I was praying for <laughs> before that I was longing to see all of a sudden began to manifest because I realized it was already here in Jesus, <laughs> in the gospel, that heaven was here. Whoa, that there was no separation between heaven and earth. Uh, so, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is the good news, right? It's, uh, um, and, and I, I guess just to share a little bit more of my story with it it was the year 2008 and I was just you know uh, well people began to share it with me but I'll just share one particular story I was sitting you know in a prayer room just reading different scriptures and stuff and I, I came to mark 115 and I was reading it in like an old KJV Bible you know with the gilded edges the gold edges and the red letters and uh, the part I was looking at um, there was only one line in red letters and I'm like, well, it's Jesus' words. It's probably good. And it says that Jesus went, you know, began to preach from town to town the gospel of God. And then in red letters, it has one sentence. I'm like, wow, the gospel of God is just one little sentence that Jesus would share? I was like, this is pretty wild. And uh, I began to see, you know, I just read it. And it says, the kingdom of God is at hand. So repent and believe the gospel. Um and I'm like, okay, so repent and believe the gospel. That's like a response. So what is the gospel? It must be just the first part of that phrase. The kingdom of God is at hand. And, uh, you know, that sounds kind of like religious language. But the more I looked at it, the more I realized, like, Jesus was actually saying, like, all of his heavenly kingdom, you know, Matthew 4, 17 translates as the kingdom of heaven is at hand. All of his heavenly kingdom is, <clears throat> here's my hands. Like, this, it's as far away as this. Yeah. And uh, that nearness... Um, that that you know that gospel completely removes all distance all delay to experiencing god to experiencing all the things of the kingdom and in essence like what i began to see over the years was it means uh everything that we thought was reserved for heaven someday is here now um or i like to just share the gospel with people sometimes and say congratulations welcome to heaven you made it <laughs> by no efforts of your own it's not your fault but jesus came and put the whole world you know uh, at one with heaven yeah and so you know that was when this whole rabbit hole just began to unfold you know <laughs> um man and that's when the whack just became consistently strong for me and uh, i've just encouraged people everywhere i go now like uh you know, that I know that, that you're, the mind struggles with this because we see, you know, earthly problems and we see, you know, pain, mm -hmm. suffering, sickness, sorrow, death, yeah, all this stuff where we've even felt that, you know, we felt depressed, we felt discouraged. And, uh, but the gospel comes to say that, um, it's not saying that, oh, all those things are heaven and this is all there is, right? Because that's what some people think they get upset with what we're saying. They're like, this isn't heaven. I mean, there's people suffering everywhere. There's little kids getting 
molested and raped around the world. That's not heavenly. Yeah. And and so it's important to make a distinction. That's not what we're saying. We're not saying that like all these people's pain and problems and sorrow and struggle is all there is. What we're saying is that in the midst of all of that, in all the world, in all of our human experience, Jesus has brought in like the overlay of a, of another reality that is present at the same time called yeah. the kingdom of heaven. Right. And as we become more aware of that other reality, um, this reality that we are so used to transforms. Um, you know, it, it, we walk by faith and not by sight. So as he gives us the gift of faith to believe that his heavenly world is here in him, the new creation, uh, that's what brings the transformation. Um, I don't know. Does that make it's sense good. to you? Like how, we're, yeah. how I'm saying it, you know? Uh, yeah. And of course I've heard you say a lot of this over the years and it's just always good to hear it. You know, uh, every day you need to hear it. So I agree, man. <laughs> yeah, really Me good. Too, yeah. Really good. There's two things I wanted to make sure that I brought up today about the kingdom of heaven. Um, it's Holy. both completely one and given already it's the the work of attaining the kingdom of heaven is already accomplished by jesus and it's inevitable <laughs> i think some people need to hear today that the kingdom of heaven is inevitable i was thinking that some people listening to this might be in two different camps either they're experiencing some difficult contradiction right now or they're afraid of experiencing some difficult contradiction. And those, unless you're completely, uh, you know, just aware of what we're talking about and, and just experiencing it today, which is great, um, you might be in one of those two situations. And to those people, the kingdom of heaven means uh, two different things, I think, right now. The person who is experiencing an intense contradiction can rest assured that all of the freedom, bliss, joy, that you want to experience from whatever's happening to you, whether it's pain, whether it's somebody's doing something to you, or there's something just very challenging happening, you know, your house has got flooded or something. Um, you can know that the kingdom of heaven is completely already given to you yes. in, in Christ. You know, the Come spirit on. of Jesus inside of you is all of heaven. So yes. you can experience all of heaven in every part of your emotions and in every part of how you're thinking about your situation right now. Um, that's difficult to hear when you're going through something very, <clears throat> very difficult. But um, you need to know that Jesus is the only thing that can cut through all of those layers of challenge and difficulty in your mind. He doesn't need to take them away one at a time. He doesn't need to peel them back by onions. And you got weeks to go before you experience or years. A freedom or years. Yeah. Um, you know, whatever your situation is, he is already fully in you. Come on. You are already fully in him. Yes. And the kingdom of heaven is piercing through from that reality that he's fully given to you into your current situation. So Come you on. can start enjoying heaven now. You can. Yes. Um, the other, the other th the group of people would be somebody who's afraid of something bad happening. Yeah. A lot of people are caught up in anxiety. They're caught up in fear. Mm. Sometimes it, it manifests on, as just an, 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 a physical feeling. You're not even thinking about something. That you're not afraid something's going to happen. Like you're thinking about it consciously. Maybe you just get this anxious physical manifestation in your body. Yeah. So they think something's not right. Yeah, you know, and yeah, it's yeah. not connected to anything conscious. It's just some kind it's of true. response so many people to are plagued by that. Yeah, yeah it could yeah. Be just be a response to 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 a trauma that happened in the past that's not even relevant anymore. It could be something, just some way your brain got wired or whatever. And the good news is, is uh, it doesn't matter because um, he he wants to, it, much like the first group of people, he wants to give you this positive outlook via you being in him and him in you and he wants to do it effortlessly he wants to do it instantaneously yes, um, by yes, recognizing yes. and realizing jesus inside you and you Come inside on. him by his spirit and that you're in the presence of the father <laughs> you can be totally flooded with optimism with loving kindness towards your enemies with a feeling of virtue a feeling of um, 
of favor, knowing that yes. you're going to walk some into some place and people are going to respond positively to you or that you are going to be faced with some emotional difficulty and you're going to respond positively. You're going to respond with the way God would respond, even if it's challenging, because the thing is, is he's protecting you. He's got you. You are in yes. him. You are safe in him. You are under Come the on. shadow of his wing. So nothing can touch you there. Nothing Amen. can nothing can affect you on that level. He is always deeper and more real. The kingdom of heaven is always a more present and more yes. palpable reality than any circumstance that's trying to tell you otherwise. Yes. And by enjoying that, by effortlessly participating with Jesus in that, in the kingdom of heaven, including in his emotions and his mind, you begin to be able to just effortlessly manifest the kingdom of heaven yeah, out of your being rest. through yeah. signs and wonders or through signs and wonders like loving your children. Yes, <laughs> so yes. Um, that's kind Come of the on. two things I wanted to touch on. The, I guess the thing that I didn't maybe didn't talk about was it's inevitable. Yeah. So yeah. take your take your responsibility for doing something about that knowledge I just gave you out of the equation. Yeah. He's yeah. coming for you. It's his. Yeah. And it's he, his. He it, came. For he you. came for you yeah. fully. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. came for you fully, and as far as well, I don't know how to make that happen. He's gonna. It's coming you for you. It. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming for you because yeah, he's exactly. awakening you to that ever present reality of heaven on earth, yeah. already freely, totally given through all that Jesus did. He Come can't on. do anything else. Yeah. So. No, it, exactly, and and uh, you know we're we're gonna jump to a bunch of different aspects of this in this podcast here, but. Um, we still are only scratching the surface. I, I would say this message, because it is the gospel of Jesus, so the gospel that Jesus <clears throat> preached, is is the si the central message of our ministry and the things that have coming out of Fort Wayne, the things that I've been saying for years. Uh, and there's so much to unpack. And so at first, it's like a mind blowing reality. The gospel is meant to be mind blowing, right? It's supposed to be so good. It's the good news. And uh, but at first. It's like so shocking that a lot of people, it's too good to be true for them. And, uh, and I think what, what Zach was addressing there is many of the challenges that we, you know, get s stuck in sometimes like feeling like, oh, if the kingdom of heaven is here, then I have to make it manifest in some way or something, or what do I need to do to experience it? And both of those, it's good news. It's even better than that. The, that all that is irrelevant. <laughs> all of your efforts to make right, it manifest, right. all of the pressure that, you know, we're so used to as Christians, like putting pressure back on us to save the world. The good news is that Jesus saved the world. He didn't even just save us so we could go to heaven someday. He saved us and, and caught us into heaven now. Yeah. And, uh, so I just wanted to start to yeah. kind of unpack that and then we'll read a couple of things that some people, other people had written about it. But, um, just unpacking that, I think part of what Zach is addressing there too, is that sometimes when we hear that, we think of the outward circumstance definition of heaven. We think, uh, it's, you know, it's an initially going to be lots of money for me or lots of health for me or lots of doors opening opportunities that I wanted and lots of fluffy sitting on a fluffy cloud doing nothing while a worship band plays. Right, right. Like whatever outward thing that may be, like those are all cool. And that all that stuff, I believe, can and will happen in different ways. But that's <laughs> not the the substance of the message. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, any uh, any spiritual person with a degree of depth to them uh, will have to admit that outward things is not what it's all about. But it, those things are important. They, they, they come later. That The essence of this message is that you always have God. Like we always have the fullness of God uh, to experience um, because we're one with that. What Jesus did when he was saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand is restoring to the original intent of all creation, which is that heaven and earth will be one. Um, Ephesians <laughs> chapter one, uh, on. up, up to verse 11, like, uh, <laughs> talk about the great purpose of the ages, which is in the fullness of the times that God would bring all things together, all things in heaven and all things on earth together in one in Jesus Christ. And so sure, that's going to mean, uh, you know, circumstances are going to change and they're going to become more positive, you know, the outward circumstances, but 
you know, just like in the days uh, when Jesus was walking the earth for 33 years in Israel, they all thought that Jesus was going to change their outward circumstances primarily, which is why they didn't understand his ministry. They thought, oh, Jesus is here. Now he's going to overthrow the government. He's going to set himself up in the, these roles. And they were looking to all the outward things first. And so just as in then, if now you're looking for the kingdom of heaven firstly to come outwardly, um, you, you'll you miss it and you'll be frustrated and have hope deferred. But when it starts with, oh my God, I can just experience God, like perfect intimacy with Abba, Jesus, and Holy Spirit on earth as it is in heaven. I'm not praying that prayer. Jesus taught his disciples to pray that, but then at the cross, he accomplished that and we're already living in that now. Um, you know, So you have perfect intimacy with the Father. You have all access to his spiritual wealth within you that's where it starts when you begin to experience that which that can't be taken away from you if if you yeah. know, say you got sick or say you know uh, people are persecuting you people are abusing you um, that you still have God you still have the wealth and you the still riches have everything. of heaven yeah you have it all <laughs> you still have it all because the substance of it all is what we're talking about when the high on God, like where yeah. it's the bliss, the ecstasy of communion with the one who created all things ex nihilo. It's the, it's the, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords living in your actual being and tangibly being able to feel that. And so that's what first changed for me when I heard the gospel was, Oh my God, I used to hear God maybe once a month or feel a touch from God every now and then I feel God every day now. Like I feel in any moment I'm like, Oh, I realize there's no separation. There's no, you know, future date where I'm going to be able to feel God more than I do now. Uh, <laughs> there's no, and, and this yeah. message, I'm telling you, if it still sounds weird just sit here for in any moment and be like, I'm filled with the glory of God. Like I can't get any more of Jesus and have a little expectation in your heart that maybe that's true. And all of a sudden you're jacked up, you're blissed, whether things are going right circumstantially or not. Right. And I think that's what I was getting at with inevitable because yes. it's not about some future. When I say an inevitable, I don't mean some future time coming to pass. Yeah. I mean, there, he's totally accomplished everything already. Yes. So it's inevitable that you will realize that. Yeah. It's well, inevitable that, that's that the good news too. It's like, yeah, it, you, there's, there's no more, there's no more finality than what's already been given because you know, you, you, even though we're awakening more and more to the reality of, of it, you, you're experiencing the fullness of the reality of it yes. right now, you know, and if you're not feeling you're it right that. now, it's just inevitable that you will the Holy awaken Spirit more and will awaken more. You too. Yes, yeah. exactly. It's like what yeah. one phrase that I like to say is like the same Jesus that saved you completely at the cross. Uh, it's the same Holy Spirit that will will awaken you completely to what happened. And so your salvation happened without your efforts. Your awakening will happen without your efforts as yeah. well. So we do acknowledge like we're all awakening more and more to heaven on earth. Yeah. But the Even good right news, now. exactly. The good news <laughs> is that it's already true. It's yeah. not the kingdom now and not yet. It's the kingdom now and we will continue to experience it more and more for all of eternity. Um, but most people on this planet are still walking around feeling like there's a better day somewhere far away. Um, and most Christians, unfortunately, believe that it's after you die. Now, I want to read a little article um, from N.T. Wright. And I've been quoting this different places I've been preaching lately. And then maybe we can discuss it a little more. This yeah, yeah. This podcast might go a little long. I don't know. But um, I, I've been I've been posting this article. I posted this article on my Facebook recently and been talking about it. Because what was cool is N.T. Wright is a theologian that's pretty much well respected across the body of Christ. And... Uh, so when I read this in Time, it's in Time Magazine. I think it was the December 2019 issue of Time. Um, they, they let him write an, an article in there. And he chose to write on this very subject. Which, Talk about favor, dude. Yeah, exactly. And I thought it was theologian like perfect timing, you know. Time. Yeah, and, yeah, and it's so cool that he chose this uh, this theme. And I, I found it's, it's a pretty common theme for him. Um, because he sees the importance of it as well. And so sometimes people think, oh, here's these guys that are whacked out high on God or whatever. They're, they're probably not reading their Bibles or their theology is probably super weird. Um, it was encouraging to me to see N.T. Wright in Time Magazine sharing what I think is the cornerstone of, of what I wrote in my book 
and what we've been ministering on, which is just the gospel. But so what's the article say? It says the New Testament doesn't say what most people think it does about heaven. That's the title, right? And uh, I'm just going to read the beginning part. From This is from N.T. Wright, who is a professor of New Testament and early Christianity at the University of St. Andrews and a senior research fellow at Wycliffe Hall, Oxford University. The author of over 80 books. Um, here, here's what he says about it. He says, One of the central stories of the Bible, many people believe, is that there is a heaven and an earth and that human souls have been exiled from heaven and are serving out time here on earth until they can return. Indeed, for most modern Christians, the idea of going to heaven when you die is not simply one belief among others, but the, the one that seems to give a point to it all. But the, <laughs> the kind of people who believed in that kind of heaven when the New Testament was written were not the early Christians. They were the middle Platonists, people like Plutarch, a younger contemporary of St. Paul, who was a philosopher, biographer, essayist, and pagan priest in Delphi. To understand what the first followers of Jesus believed about what happens after death, we need to read the New Testament in its own world, the, the world of Jewish hope, of Roman imperialism, and of Greek thought. The followers of that Jesus movement that grew up, uh, grew up in a complex environment uh, saw heaven and earth, God's space and ours, if you like, as the twin halves of God's good creation. Rather than rescuing people from the latter in order to reach the former, the Creator God would finally bring heaven and earth together in one great act of new creation completing the original creative purpose by healing the entire cosmos of its ancient ills. Holy. <laughs> they believe that God would then raise his people from the dead to share in and indeed share his stewardship over this rescued and renewed creation. And they believed all this because of Jesus. They believe that with the resurrection of Jesus, this new creation had already been launched. Jesus embodied in himself the perfect fusion of heaven and earth. In Jesus, therefore, the ancient Jewish hope had come true at last. The point was not for us to go to heaven, but for the life of heaven to arrive on earth. But from as early as the third century, some Christian teachers tried to blend this with types of the Platonic belief, generating the idea of leaving earth and going to heaven, which became mainstream by the Middle Ages. But Jesus' first followers never went that route. Now, the rest of the article goes on, and N.T. Wright has a lot of great things to say about this. I might revisit some later. But the point is, like, uh, you know, it's the, the Scripture is clear that, uh, you know, this life was not about going to heaven after you die. In fact, um, I preached several times recently, and I have an old video on this from long ago, where I say, I have really good news for you all. None of you are going to die and go to heaven. <laughs> and that invariably, you know, provokes a, 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 almost a gasp in the Christian audience that you know, we're sharing with like, wait, what? Oh, surely he's joking. But no, for real, uh, the, the good news of the gospel has nothing to do with going to heaven after you die. That's not the good news. And in fact, it's good news that none of us are going to go to heaven after we die. Now, I want you to think about that for a minute. Um, but I'm going to, you know, explain a little bit. We're not saying that there's, you know, not good things that, you know, people experience if they die and go somewhere. And maybe we'll talk about that in a minute. But the point is, you know, Ephesians 2, 6 says you're already seated with Christ in heavenly places. Hebrews 12 says that we're already seated at the, the mm -hmm. festival of heaven, right. surrounded by myriads of angels that we've come to God, that we've come to Jesus. The thing is, is it's in the mm -hmm. spirit at first. It's spiritual. It's invisible at first. And so... We're so used to living by the five sense realm, which is awesome. We're not saying deny your humanity. That, that was our last podcast was about. Like your humanity is amazing. The five sense realm is amazing. Um, but there's things beyond your five senses. And this is what I was talking about earlier too. Like it's not about changing the five sense realm first. It's about seeing this invisible heavenly kingdom where we're seated with Jesus right now. Yeah. Where all of heaven is here. The best parts <laughs> about heaven are you know, are already 100% manifesting in your life inside of you. When we speak the good news to you, you can awaken to that. You could either have an opportunity to say, Oh, I think that's stupid and a lie. Or when you hear that faith can arise in your heart and you can, Oh my God, feel the bliss of heaven, literally feel heaven every day. And I've been living this for like 12 years, dude. It works. I've felt freaking <laughs> heavenly every day for the last 12 years, like hammered, 
hammered. I mean, I'm not always like freaking laughing and rolling around, but I always feel heaven. And uh, I've gone through challenges just like anybody else. You know, I've seen friends struggle and in, in people die that were close to me. I've had sicknesses at times. You know, I've seen my kids struggle. All kinds of things have happened. It's not that we don't have challenges. It's just that we're experiencing something that can't be taken away. Yeah, and uh, exactly. And so, you know, I love that N.T. Wright was writing about this. And, and I think any good theologian will point to the reality that this has nothing to do with, um, you know, a future heaven. You know, and what he, he kind of points out in that article is like, uh, you know, the, the Old Testament was all these prophecies about the coming kingdom the coming kingdom. Uh, they were looking for the Messiah, right? That was going to establish something glorious in Israel. And as I mentioned, they might have misinterpreted that a little bit, but there's tons of these Old Testament pro- promises. And uh, in, in Corinthians, it says all the promises are yes and amen in Christ. The problem is so many times in this new covenant era, after Jesus has lived, died, and resurrected, our prayers so often still sound exactly like Old Testament prayers. You know, we're still looking for these this great and glorious day when Jesus returns. It's like we're more excited about the second coming. We haven't even realized what happened at the first coming. <laughs> you know, and the glory of David was that he had he had seen and glimpsed dude, Christ. Exactly. And all of these it's like every prophetic picture in the Old Testament was leading up to when Jesus came and made heaven and earth one and brought the kingdom. And that already happened 2,000 years ago, folks. Like, <laughs> Yeah, if you're waiting to die to experience heaven, then death is your savior. Exactly. And that's the classic <laughs> phrase that people don't realize. But most Christians are putting more stock in their death to save them than Jesus. Yeah. You know, And they've adapted salvation to kind of mean something like, well, you're forgiven so that you can go to heaven someday. That's not salvation. That doesn't set you free from depression, discouragement, sin, uh, sickness, despair, all these ills of the world. It, like that's at best a very partial salvation that people preach. When what we're talking about in the finished work is that all of salvation was accomplished. Um, and, and really the Bible speaks of no other. You know, there are prophecies about a future glorious hope. Don't get us wrong. But And maybe we can describe that a little bit more in depth here. But what I believe is that the great things of the future are merely like the old song says. Um, I think it's from the song, It Is Well With My Soul, where it says, um, there's a glorious day when our faith will be made sight. And there's a, there's a couple of references, like First John chapter 4, I believe. It says, you know, it has not yet appeared what we shall be. Um, but it says right before that, uh, that we are the children of God. And the reality is, you know, we already are like sons of God, which means we're in the image and likeness restored just like Jesus, but it hasn't appeared to the world yet. Not everyone's awakened to it. There's going to come a day when every eye will see, where every tongue will confess and every knee will bow. But the, the reality is already here. It's just in the future, everyone's going to see it, you know, and so... Instead of, you know, longing for salvation, crying out for revival, I can't wait until there's a revival, until there's a great awakening. Like, that's missing the gospel. Yeah. The gospel is that we're seated in the juiciest, thickest, most living, tangible presence. All of the glory that, you know, was in the Old Testament temple that knocked the priests over and, you know, they were unable to stand and unable to speak for the Shekinah cloud. It lives inside of us now with Christ in us. You know, Colossians 1 says the great mystic secret of the ages is Christ in us. And that's heaven. Like, if you think there's going to be a greater day in the future where you get something better than Christ in you, you miss the gospel. Right. Like, yeah. you know, the author of heaven lives in you. That's greater than heaven, but it's, in fact, comes with all of heaven. He comes because Jesus is our heaven. The Holy Spirit and Abba are our heaven. And so, Um, We're not saying like when we say it's good news, none of you are going to heaven after you die. Uh, We're not saying that um, if somebody dies, they're not going to be, you know, experiencing heaven. What we're saying is it's already here now. You're not going anywhere because you're already there. When you die, I think, and maybe we can, you know, talk about this for a minute because Zach and I were talking about this earlier in the week. Um, Yeah. Because what I often get, and I just got this last week when we were in Europe, some really hammered Europe meetings and, and times together with people there. 
uh, but people would come up after the meeting. They said, well, what about my dead relatives? Like I thought you said they're not going to heaven after they die and they're confused, you know, and you hear it like in, in compassion arises within me. I'm like, that's not what I meant. That's not what I'm saying. Um, but I even had that on my Facebook, you know, someone recently said, uh, um, I had like my grandfather died and where did he go? You know? Right. And, uh, I don't even know if we need to go into all this or, or whatever, but NT Wright had some good stuff. It could be a topic, good topic for another video. I know, because we're already at 35 minutes here. But so you guys can blow up our anchor, whatever. If yeah, you're yeah, yeah. Really yeah. super curious, or ask other questions about this if you're not sure. Yeah, please. Although I Even will if it's say, unrelated. yeah, I, I will say, like, you know, you don't need to understand every little part of something to begin to receive it, though. Like this, <laughs> this message should already start to kind of uh, be resonating. At yes, this point. <laughs> dude. Like, isn't it good? You know, because what we're saying it's not i have no desire to just come up with some new cutting edge theological thing <laughs> to sound cool or or jesus you know. christ yeah is dude. the message yeah and and everybody's talking, talking about, about revivals that are coming you know i yeah. just made a post about like there's all these super bowl revival prophecies i can't be bothered with all that because all those things are pointing again to distance delay revival will come if maybe someday when the whole message of the gospel i think you know that i see in there is that <laughs> jesus brought all the fullness to each and every one of us doesn't mm, matter if you yeah. think you're the worst sinner the worst backslider or you're the most spiritual christian each and every one of us have the same gift not some not even a gift that we need to figure out how to unwrap or how to receive no it's already in you it's already like the communion of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because this is the question I often ask people. Like, what do you think your intimacy was going to be like with God in heaven? They're like, wow, like, it's going to be perfect, right? Or what do you think, you know, what do you think heaven's going to be like? All of those things are not yours now. And you don't even need to figure out how to, like, make them manifest. It's, you know, that's the whole point of, of you know, when Jesus says, simply believe or only believe and even that faith is a gift but that in the moment where you all of a sudden stop uh you know it's saying it's too good to be true in, in that moment where you just are like oh my god what if my whole being is flooded with glory all of a sudden like you start to feel your whole being flooded with glory <laughs> <laughs> and then the circumstances that we were talking about at the beginning of the of the episode do begin to shift and change because the glory begins to manifest out of you and uh you know i've we've seen f tons of finance just dropped in a day we've seen the sick healed you know because all of it's included in that in we've seen supernatural kindness come out of ourselves dude, to our children exactly like our, our <laughs> everyday life begins to you know <laughs> circumstances begin to change and patience manifests you know i'm not trying to become patient I'm already as patient as Jesus is in heaven. Yeah. That's the gospel. And so when that like dawns on me, I'm just patient as a mofo. You get you know? to become a passive participator in a perfect life. <laughs> yes. And and this yeah. is where the sauce flows from, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. This is where the ju this is this is the glory that Jesus had with the Father before the world was. It's yours now. And he loves living out our human existence. He's not trying to take us somewhere far away. He made the earth for a reason because he likes it. He made this human body for a reason. And it's it's just as heavenly as anything for <laughs> Zach to have to go back to work after this podcast is over or whatever. I, you know, I, we, yeah. go, we go pick up our kids. Right. That's good. Which reminds me. Yep. I'm going to have to do that pretty <laughs> soon. You know, it's yeah. filled with with heaven life and bliss yeah and gratitude just begins to flow you're thankful for everything because you see oh this isn't a hindrance you know this person right, this person right. in front of me isn't like uh, just something yes. i'm enduring until i get somewhere better like this person is part of heaven like yes i'm in it, you know you it, just accept that jesus is going to be where you're going yes. this is where you're at now jesus is in you following you around everywhere then it's not there's no disappointment in the future there's, there's no, no better day i'm waiting for so i'm in yeah, the great you're day not hoping of God. in the future now yeah. if you're going through pain and struggle obviously we're not saying that's all there is for you and this is all there is 
because uh, like like Zach said, it's going to manifest more and more in our experience. Things are going to get transformed, you know. But I think uh, if you're experiencing pain, sometimes you hold on to that hope of that manifestation yeah. in such a way that causes you not to see the release and freedom to be experienced yes. even despite the pain. Well, and it is true. Like mo most of the pain that people are experiencing is self-induced due to their interpretation of a circumstance. Yeah, the suffering. You know, yeah, like ongoing suffering. Like now I'm not saying... That, that's all it is, but I, I've found the majority of what people are experiencing torment, discouragement, depression, and that's more of their what they think because the way they process things, they think, right. well, I'm this life sucks, life is hard, um, yeah. it's it's always going to be a struggle, um, nobody loves me, uh, all you know, uh, all of that stuff, and the gospel of Jesus and the experience of the presence of Abba, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, which are fully hours now transform even that and so yes you know i i think we're living in an age where yes there will still be you know jesus says in this world you will have trouble but that's only because not everyone has awakened to this message and so some people don't believe this message because they think it won't be true until everyone else awakens to this message but that in itself is uh the reason why everyone isn't feeling it so you might as well just begin to believe it for yourself yeah. To put it another way, it's like I meet people who think this message is too good to be true. And it's kind of like someone saying, wow, everybody is so poor. And then someone comes and says, well, I'll give you a billion dollars. And you're like, well, I, can't, I don't know if I want to receive it because everybody is so poor and this world is just meant to be poor. And it's like, well, someone's giving you a billion dollars. Like all of a sudden you can alleviate the poverty around you. And you're like, well, this world is a poor place. You know, it, it, this is so, and I see people, you know, uh, interact with this message. Sometimes it feels like that. It's like God's already given you the fullness of the kingdom of heaven. And you're like, well, the kingdom of heaven isn't really here. I don't, I don't really, you know, we're someday I'll be able to enjoy that. But it's like, if you're, you know, if you begin to enjoy it, you can spread it to everybody else. And all of a sudden everyone awakens to the fact that it's here. Yeah. And so it's, you know, people get caught in this catch 22 of their, brain with this message and so maybe that's what this podcast was about to mm. just help you get out of that you know humans have just accepted so much less than what god has for us and the gospel of jesus is here to freely give you all the riches of christ not just uh, circumstantial riches although i think those things do come from the lord too but yeah. to begin to experience like all the inward and spiritual riches of communion with father jesus and holy spirit <laughs> yeah allow yourself to 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 feel good yes. from what we've just said yes allow yourself to ruminate on it today after the video is over we've gotten so used to feeling bad as as humanity and especially as spiritual people we feel good about feeling bad we feel bad if we feel too good because we've been told that this world is struggle and suffering and we just need to accept it when Jesus said, you know, said, I came that you might have life and life forevermore. And so, man, I know we just touched on a thousand different things. Send us some questions. Let's interact. I guess we'll have to do maybe a part two of this or something. Um, Cause it's such a rich topic. Every topic we've covered is like, we're just scratching the surface. We realize that, but uh, interact with us. Um, we're all growing in revelation and it's so fun to just share uh, that's why I love, you know, the, the little, little bit of conversational style on these. Uh, Zach and I are just bouncing off ideas and getting more whacked. The more we experience, you know, this stuff, the more we learn something new. Uh, because it's, and, you know, and I can tell you this. If the revelation isn't giving you more bliss and more joy, then it's not from the Lord. Because we're, you know, rejoice in the Lord always. I came that you might have life and life abundantly. Uh, that is the fruit of the gospel <laughs> so let's just have a big drink together as we close thank you lord <laughs> wave after wave of this reality let it soak in you are flooded with heaven there's you know that you, you can't get any more of god you're not getting any closer, you know, whether you are in the body or out of the body, it hardly matters. <laughs> You're with the Lord now. So, yeah. Anything else? That's good. It's good. It is good. Amen. <laughs>
See ya. Heaven is yours. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the High on God podcast with Matthew Spinks and Zachary Paul Pratt. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and check out the accompanying YouTube vlog where we'll have short guided meditations on the glory of Jesus, as well as additional random coverage and updates from the God High. Also, if you believe in the message we're putting out to the world, consider donating or becoming a monthly partner at www.thefirehouseprojects.com slash donate so that we can spread the authentic, inebriating good news of Jesus. Alrighty then, until next time, stay high on the supply inside that never runs dry, Jesus Christ.